Hi, welcome to Torrent Talk, and today is going to be all about Thor Annual Number One. I have been very excited to read the Thor Annual for a number of reasons. Let me just tell you. Firstly, because Thor is my favorite Marvel character, or one of my favorite, um, I could just say probably my favorite, yeah. That I am a huge Thor fan. Thor is one of my favorite characters because he's part legend and part superhero. So that's just an interesting little mix of things to me because usually you see gods just you don't know, see what they do. So it's kind of cool to see what he does, even though know, he's like more of a demigod. But the other reason I'm excited is because the part of young Thor is written by former WWE champion and now UFC guy, CM Punk. I used to really be into wrestling. I've kind of faded out of it now. I don't watch it like all the time. Like I used to literally watch it every day of the week. I mean, not even joking. And he is definitely the rebellious anti-hero type and was is like his on and off screen personality and that's why I think he is perfect to write Young Thor because I feel like Young Thor will have that kind of rebellious anti-hero qualities as well. Also CM Punk is very into comics. He's written for comics before. He did stories in Vertigo, Strange Sports Stories. He's a huge huge fan and I think that his take on Young Thor is super awesome. So, this Thor story is three separate teams working on three separate stories. So, CM Punk and Rob Guillory are doing Young Thor. Noelle Stevenson and Marguerite Savage are doing present day Lady Thor. And Jason Aaron, artist Timothy Truman, and colorist Frank Martin work on King Thor, Old King Thor. And each team has their unique style. When it comes to each character, they're very different. Young Thor's art seems more very exaggerated and youthful looking. Um, reminds me of like a lot of cartoons I see now. Marie Savage's work is very nice. It has more lighter pastel tones. Her work is amazing and they always have these billowy beautiful curls and she does that really well. Timothy Truman and Frank Martin combined to make the world of King Thor and King Thor's uh, style is kind of like my favorite style for Thor art. Um, it looks how I think the world of Thor looks in my mind when I picture it. So now on to the story. So just so you know, spoiler warning. So in case you haven't read it, there are spoilers ahead, so just just give you a heads up. So, it starts off with old King Thor, and he's lamenting about this dead elf king and how there are no more elves and the elf king should be buried with his people. And I think he's just going on and on, you know, about the end of life. And some guards are coming up to him and telling him all these problems all over nine rounds. And Thor is just depressed. He's just like, ugh. Gosh, like, uh, just can you just get the Bifrost ready? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm not dealing with this right now. <laughs> Don't, like, I just can't be bothered with the fucker right now. Thor goes to his garden, and his granddaughters are talking and watching him go. And Thor's garden is actually Midgard, aka Earth, which is now a dead planet. There is no life. His granddaughters follow him down there. And they're trying to figure out a way to make him happy since it's his birthday. So they start stealing all these ancient scrolls and this ancient clay and magic and shit to try to make creation to make life on Earth. But since the scrolls are really old and they really don't know what they're doing, they make all these fucked up creatures. It's like elephants with like six tusks and like sharks with fucking wings and there's like zebras with butterfly wings. It's all this. This is all Mad Lib style make your own animal and it reminds me of when you were a kid and you know you draw real hard and you're drawing and you take it to your parents and they know it looks like absolute bullshit but they still tell you oh honey you did such a good job yeah, good for you. Oh, so that is just how Thor was Thor was like oh it's so perfect you guys are awesome and they told him there is still some old 
magic left over and they saved it for him so he can create something. Thor uses the clay to create humans, which he names Jane and Steve, and tells them that the earth is there, then they can populate it again and start anew. So they were just trying to give their grandpa the best gift ever and they succeeded. And I just like this tale because it just reminds me of hanging out with grandparents and you're, oh, you know, like if you have a good relationship with them and you're trying to impress them. And it's also really interesting to see all the wear and tear on Thor where he's just like, yeah, I don't have time to deal with these problems. Like, he is just not even dealing with any nonsense in this, so I really like that. Present day Lady Thor's story starts with her in a tavern and she's trying to get her wasted on. And this guy's talking crap about how, oh, well, anybody can get the power of Thor if you got it. I should try to take the power of Thor. And she's like, yeah, dude, you try to touch my hammer, we're going to have some freaking problems. Thor in this timeline has lost his powers and now there is a female Thor willing the power of Mjolnir. The fight escalates and now the Warrior Three were like, oh, we can't just let her get beat up. We got to help her. So they help her. She ends up getting thrown out of a window out on the streets and they get kicked out of the, the tavern and she's all like yeah sorry i got you kicked out bar i didn't want any trouble with that guy I'm kind of an asshole i'm still learning you know how to use these powers and they're just kind of like oh you're not our thor we want our thor you know they're just bitching and they're just all on our case you know if you're really worthy of william millionaire you need to prove it and she's like well i don't really need to prove anything but whatever and so she's just gonna go along with their little plan. So they want to put her through a series of tests to find out if she's really worthy of Milner. So they go all over the round and at the end of it they finally accept her and she's saying you know I didn't have to really prove anything to you because since Milner thinks I'm worthy it chose me. I know I'm worthy and this was just kind of a way for them to feel better about the whole situation and to kind of like bond with them and have her own memories since she's not their Thor but she could be herself and create memories with them just like Thor did and I thought that was really cute. Young Thor's story starts off where he is just in a tavern drinking his life away and he had gathered all these warriors from all over the not even warriors just drinkers like hardcore like can you hold your liquor you're invited and he, he summons all these guys there and they're just drinking and he out drinks them all and so loki's there but he's just kind of like oh thor just being a you know thor drunken idiot and so everybody's congratulating thor on his victory meanwhile outside of the tavern Mephisto has traveled back in time and he's like, yeah, I'm going to corrupt this young Thor and I'm going to get Asgard and, you know, I'm going to be the ruler. And so he's talking all about these plans, but in the panel, the best part is this little sign here on the door that basically says solicitors will be beheaded. I, I thought that was so funny that even in Thor's world, even on Asgard, they're like, yeah, solicitors, dude, they suck. As Loki is leaving out the door, he smashes right into Mephisto with the fucking door. And then they just start talking and, you know, concoct his plan to try to bring down Thor. So Thor's in there and he has literally drank all of the mead in the tavern. There is no more. And so Mephisto just bursts in, he's like, yeah, Thor came all this way to challenge you to a drinking contest huh? <laughs> and everyone just falls out laughing because nobody there's literally bodies of people all around that have tried to out drink thor and it hasn't happened but since thor drank all the meat they had to come up with all these other special drinks these weird concoctions and one's is like green goo with an eyeball in it and some of them have these weird names my favorite one though was the drink called Odin's Beard and the caption on the drink literally just says literally just ale soaked hair and I thought that was awesome so Mephisto couldn't really handle his booze and he's turning all green and he's puking and the bartender's like uh oh, it's lightweight like get him out of my place like can't handle it so Loki's like okay let's just have one last drink winner takes all I'll make the drink you know let's just sell this 
So Loki makes a drink and of course he tampers with it. And so Thor and Mephisto just start pounding it back. Thor doesn't swallow, he just holds it in his mouth. And then Mephisto swallows his and he's just like, just boom, just disappears in like a of green smoke. And Thor spits his out just right on Loki, grabs him like, yeah, I knew you were gonna try to do something you know, crazy. Thor is feeling really accomplished because, you know, he defeated Mephisto, he defeated all these guys in his drinking contest, and he thinks that this is his good deed of getting wasted, and that this is gonna make him worthy of wielding Mjolnir. And he fails epically. This was my favorite, favorite story because it was just pure fun. It was just Thor being young and stupid and having a drinking contest and him actually thinking that this was a worthy enough challenge for him to, able, to be able to wield Mjolnir is just hilarious. And the art style makes everything feel young and fun and not too serious. And I thought that it was really interesting that CM Punk wrote an entire story about Thor just getting hammered because it is a very well-known fact that he is straight edge. So I just thought that that was just, just the kicks that he wrote a story about Thor getting, getting trashed. I was very pleased with the annual overall and I feel like it's very lighthearted. And the last one in particular to me is a lot of fun. And I think it'll be good for people who are fans of Thor and even people who usually aren't really into Thor, I think they can still find this annual enjoyable. And so I recommend that you get that. Yeah, Thor annual number one. It was really good, really funny. Hey, this is Torn from Torn Talk, and you're gonna find me right here making weekly videos on video games, probably failing, <laughs> comic books, movies, music, whatever, whatever I like talking about. This is what's gonna go on here. So I hope you like, subscribe, and you can follow me all across social media on all these little doohickeys here. And <laughs> oh god. I'm somebody's probably gonna watch this and just go, that chick's oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>